But yeah, today I want to talk about the Cairo software verification and um, what it is at all, how we use it at Serious Logic, and why it is also a very exciting way to start your verification career. But before we go into the more technical details, I just want to give a brief overview of what Serious Logic is as a company, uh, some of the products we do. I think this will just give you uh, some context of why we want to have the software even in audio enterprise group. So, yeah, Sirius is a fabulous semiconductor company and headquarters are in, uh, in the US, but there are three design centers uh, in the UK. So, actually, London and Newbury One is yeah, very close to here. And there is also one in Edinburgh, and this is where I am based. Um, and what Sirius does, we do a lot of cheap stuff and we interact act as an interface between the real analog world and the digital one. And one of the applications is uh, audio processing. The main products we do is um, audio amplifiers, some um, decoders, decoders, haptic drivers, and just to give you an idea where it is used. So audio amplifiers, you, they would be used, for example, to really drive the speaker of your smartphone, haptic drivers, uh, they control the vibration motor, and that's how you get this tactile feedback on your laptop or smartphone again. And yeah, so there is a lot of R&D going on. Um, we know you might think that amplifying audio signal is not that complicated, but indeed it actually is. And more and more of these products, they now also use digital signal processors. And this is where hydro software education comes into place. Um, sorry about some secrecy here, but I wasn't allowed to put what the actual product is. But you might recognize some of the other ones. Um, and you probably noticed that devices you carry around with are getting more complicated. And this also means that even the tiny bit, um, like audio amplifier, they're getting, getting more complex as well. A lot of smartphones now have uh, stereo speakers, for instance. And that means you need to do some clever processing of your audio as well. So since we started talking about um, products and features, I, I just wanted to quickly go through the kind of product development cycle uh, to show you where is the place of verification, hardware software verification in particular. So obviously, I'm going to start with um, requirements from our customers that they request for some features. This then gets translated to product requirements and then build a system architecture around it. And then finally, we reach the step where we start the hardware design, software design, and at the same time, have verification of both of them. And when we talk about hardware verification, it's mostly considered that we provide some stimulus to the hardware blocks, see how they react if the output is uh, what we expected, we check that the timings are um, within the specifications, and that for example, the protocols we're using, they adhere to um, various standards. Um, when we talk about the software testing and verification, this is um, a bit isolated from the hardware, so we check that the algorithms are correct, that we have enough memory to um, allocate for these algorithms, and so on. But at some point, um, we need to make sure that hardware and software actually work fine together. And unfortunately, this is where um, a lot of issues start to arise. And this is where we um, introduce the concept of hardware software um, code verification. And what this means is we, that we verify the interaction between hardware and software. Um, so we need to make sure that the hardware we design actually matches the uh, planned use cases for our software team. Um, and by the way around, that software can actually execute on the hardware we design. But what is important to know that all of this is still happening in the simulation, probably using the same kind of extension as the hardware verification, just with some additional blocks. Um, and then we just run our software on top of that um, simulation. And again, we only target a specific subset of features that um, use this hardware software interaction. So this is just an example. Quick example of uh, how a typical source logic um, amplifier looks like. So, the kind of blocks there are. And we can see there are a few um, basic hardware blocks there. 
and control interfaces, uh, serial audio interface, and plotting blobs, analog to digital converters, fire itself. Uh, but on top of that, there is also a digital signal processor uh, that add, adds an additional layer of functionality. So you can do some audio mixing, um, some filtering, audio enhancement, or some battery protection, or uh, in, uh, some security features. But the question we would be asking at the hardware software called verification engineer is how do these hardware and software blocks work together? Because there is a lot of data exchange uh, going on between the hardware and, and the software. So maybe we are receiving some feedback about the audio amplitude that would allow the DSP to correct the amplitude so that we don't exceed <laughs> some safe levels. So to sum up, uh, why, why do we need hardware software verification at all? Um, first of all, it allows us to have the hardware and software design in parallel. So the software team doesn't need to wait for, for the actual hardware to arrive and to be emulated to start running their algorithms and, and testing the, um, whether they can run correctly and interact with hardware blocks. And this allows us to put more code into the read-only memory, um, allowing us to reduce some costs. Um, we also ensure that hardware um, properly designed for software usage. Um, and then they work together seamlessly. And one important point to note is that um, a lot of the features we can test, they are more difficult to be revealed on hardware emulation platforms like FPGAs. For example, clocking blocks is uh, something that is not possible to do exactly the same on FPGA, but in, on the contrary, we can model them very precisely um, in our test bench. And again, since it's all running in simulation, there's a lot of randomization going on, and we can explore some corner cases that are otherwise maybe not um, discovered. So, um, from the testing perspective, um, when you design your hardware software test case, we first have to send hardware side, and um, to give you some idea, if you have your for example, laptop and operating system, you would have a driver that interacts with the audio pipes and it would tell the amplifier what kind of clocking um, it uses, what audio it should expect. But instead, we do that as a test right with uh, in our test bench. And then um, we also take the, um, the firmware image, the compiled firmware image, and we can put it in the memories on the chip as. Um, ones and zeros. And finally, we also have our processor model that would then uh, take instructions from the memories to make the system. And I thought it would be a good idea to just go through an example of a scenario like that. So how would you approach some hardware software test cases as a verification engineer? So if you come back to that same um, chip, so we can apply some audio signal here, which is generated from the test bench. We configure some of the hardware blocks here, uh, apply the clocks, and then at some point we enable our uh, processor here. Oh, that that first stroke was actually a bug in the presentation. <laughs> so um, we apply some input signal, uh, but before we do anything, we want to measure it correctly um, so that we can model what the output should be. And for example, here we just have two simple sine waves mixed, and we do. Um, like a frequency uh, response of the signal. I don't know if, if you were studying uh, fast Fourier transforms in, at university, if wondering if you're ever going to use it. Um, spoiler alert, it's used a lot, mm -hmm. and you will definitely see the samples in your life after you. So here we are, we have the signal, it looks pretty clean. Then it goes to the DSP, it probably goes into the memory, <laughs> and then the processor starts applying some changes to, to the audio data we have. And then it reads back from the memory and provides some audio on the output. And we here we see straight away that something probably went wrong. So we have some additional frequency components there, and this is probably noise. And what we will do is probably go blame it on the software team and tell them your algorithms are not great. Something is not right. And from there, um, the investigation will continue, and it will be a lot of back and forth. Um, trying to understand where the issue is. Um, alternatively, 
so you might be looking at your signal signal in the time domain. And again, you have a very thin sine wave, um, but on the output, you see something that is definitely not high definition stereo audio, and you definitely don't want to play um, your favorite um, song on your phone output like that. But we also see, notice straight away that here this is just a zero level. So probably um, the DSP is reading from the wrong memory locations, and that's why we get no data at all. So again, we probably want to investigate further and understand what did software do wrong to, to configure that block. And luckily, we have some relative, we have some nice tools to do that that allow us to probe into kind of two worlds at the same time. So we can synchronize to the exact moment where we see the data in hardware signal, um, go to that instruction, but then also open the kind of software debugging view where it would take us to that exact, exact um, line of code that where the misconfiguration happens. And then we can further look at the assembly instructions, um, at the count variable um, values and so on. And this actually allows you to trace the problem almost to the exact line of code where it should happen. So I hope this gave um, some idea of what a typical hardware software test scenario looks like. And, and you can see that as a verification engineer, you're always kind of the, um, in the middle of everything. So you need to talk to the hardware designers, to the software team, to the driver's team, to system architects, gather information from everyone process it and generate some um, system level scenarios, understand how the chip works as a, as a system. And I think this is one of the kind of beauties of hardware software co-verification is that you get the system level knowledge, not just uh, um, some, some portion of the design. And at the same time, you also, um, yeah, as uh, speakers before we mentioned, we use a lot of technologies as uh, verification engineers. Verilog, um, UVM, on top of that also embedded to C++, um, a lot of different tools for hardware and software debugging, and you're scripting a lot as well. Um, and yeah, this all brings me to why I think hardware software core verification is a um, great uh, way to start your career as a verification engineer. And I'll continue the trend here. <laughs> when I was joining Cirrus Logic, I had very limited understanding of what verification was. That was coming more from the uh, embedded software background. But you learn a lot um, from this interaction with multiple teams, gain a very broad um, range of skills from firmware <coughs> design, verification, sometimes even analog. And from there, um, you can maybe like, decide to explore other verification areas like mid signal, formal. But this already gives you a little bit foundation to do that. And last but not least, so when you join the project at Serious Logic, um, for example, in my case, I did some uh, training in um, System Verilog and UVM, which from Duos as well. But then three months later, I already found myself um, writing the verification plan, talking to the firmware team, gathering requirements, and then later on um, going to the full project kind of cycle um, and then closing the, the verification of our product. So yeah, and Sirius has a very nice uh, culture. You might notice there's some music theme going on. <laughs> um, but yeah, there are like guitar lessons, these are rock concerts sometimes, I mean, free food, which is a bit important as well. Um, so yeah, you, you learn a lot. Um, you have a lot of learning opportunities, but this all happens in a very nice environment and with uh, great people and i think that that's me that's me for today so um thank you very much for your attention and if you have any questions please let me know.